All right, so we are at Lake Superior in uh, Minnesota. This is basically the starting of our Boundary Waters canoe fishing adventure. I just wanted to show you the uh, mini ocean here, basically. So the highway is just up there. Got some people fishing, some people kayaking, some people swimming. Found something interesting. So there's a guy swimming out there. He has this interesting um, float bag with him. Oh, you seen that fish just jump right over there? Anyway, so you got this swimmer over here. He's got this the golds float bag pulling along with him so I suppose boats and other people can see where he's at. It's kind of cool. So we're at the uh, Sawtooth Outfitters. That's where we got our uh, canoes. We got the North Star canoe over here and uh, Winona on the other side. Three person and two person. That's how they rig them up. So we got a uh, tight arms in the back. We got this kind of interesting nifty system they came up with. Uh, holes drilled through the two by four on top of uh, foam blocks. Taking pictures? Video. That's a good idea. That's the first time I had to pull out of the Yeah, they, it peeled up this... Uh, so we're working on some issues. Not all systems right out. work for every vehicle, so... These are uh, Kevlar lightweight canoes. Oh no, yeah, this is a... A Winona too, yeah, that's right. Winona. Kevlar, super lightweight. This seat's different than uh, the one on three on our side. Got the kind of the mesh deal going on here. Shoulder rests for Karen. Pretty stoked, we're about to be on the water. So there is a turtle right there. Yeah, come over here, check this out. See him moving? Right over there? I hear him. Right. Oh my gosh. Let's see if we can get on his level. Just a random turtle running through the woods. <laughs> This way. Yeah, it's a better view over here. This guy's just been crashing around this little underbrush for a little while right by my my hammock. I actually wasn't expecting to see turtles here. I don't I don't uh, see why not. I just uh didn't think about it I guess. All right, so maiden voyage. The uh, first launch was a little rocky. We got a couple of big old rocks down here, They're trying to keep their feet from getting wet. But uh, they're out. I'll be on there tomorrow. We made it to, this is the, uh, one of the put in points for Kuishua Lake, I believe. I believe. I have to double check that. But we have campsite number one, which is pretty cool, so we'll check that out. We got Mark stuff here. And uh, I got a setup over here. Some of my gear. Super simple. Hammock, bug net, tarp. One side flipped over, it's bloody hot out here. It's probably 85, 86 degrees, humidity, and bugs everywhere. So, got a nice, nice uh, spot right here. 
right so the the put in point is actually through here you can see right through there over there through that clearing is the main put in point looks like they're doing pretty good so far the uh, canoe it's pretty light it's very light it's 20 foot 19 foot 20 foot three seater and uh, it sits pretty high in the water it's pretty good because there's gonna be three of us and a bunch of gear all right so yeah we're just chilling this is the uh, technically our put in is for tomorrow um, as far as being able to head to the next camping spot so we got here a bit early we're gonna chill they're relaxing they're gonna do a little bit of fishing out there i'm just uh checking out the scenery here and uh finagling my pack and stuff like that we packed seven days seven eight nine days of food uh, this is the put-in area so rustic campground is, is pretty primitive um if you look on the map here these are sites Here's the put-in point. This is where we're at. Um, we have a campsite that's right here. Um, and then once you hit the lake, there are designated camping spots. They're all primitive. They have this type of toilet, which I'll show later in the system. Um, and then there's portages, which are lengths of land in between other bodies of water, which there are hundreds and thousands of lakes. And we'll be doing at least half a dozen, if not more um so here's all the information big on the leave no trace thing here lots of rules for forest visitors so yeah i just wanted to show this so this is the entry point um they have like an address thing up here for it this is where you store your car for however long you're going to be on the, the lake. I think there's a hundred entries per day or something like that are allowed up to some somewhere around there. But there's long term ish parking over there. We'll be here for about seven days. Uh, here's the facilities for this spot, which is the nicest we'll see. I guess this is their cleaning schedule. So the water is going to be coming from the lake, uh, filtered or boiled or tablets, iodine, chlorine tablets kind of thing. There's the map. So you can see there's a bunch of lakes uh, surrounding. So we're gonna make it up to here. And then we're gonna hop over here and then we're gonna hop up farther off of this map permits you have to have permits to be here first lake so this trip is for fishing and canoeing and having fun on the way in we found uh, a, a baby black bear it wasn't a baby and, and a mama kind of thing but it wasn't a full grown some kind of junior size um yeah so some of the wild animals here uh deer bear beaver um lots of species of fish we've seen turtles already climbing around close to my hammock area so uh, some of the fish species we'll be targeting are the, the infamous Boundary Waters pike, large and smallmouth bass, which apparently I believe are invasive, uh, the walleye. There are lake trout. I don't know. I don't think we're going to be going for lake trout or not trying real hard for them. They're so... Every, every river and lake here has a different sets of fish. A lot of them have the same, but not all of them do. Not all of them have, like, panfish, for example, crappie, bluegill, 
sunfish. Some of them do, some of them don't. So, yeah, our goal is to uh, catch as much as possible. Not get hurt, not tip the canoe, and to uh, have a good time. It's already uh, a little hotter and a little buggier than we were expecting. It is June, uh, but this area does get pretty cold. Um, and stays cold for a decent amount of time. We'll be interested to see what we can find out there. All right, so I just want to talk about what it takes to do a trip like this. If you're interested in and uh, a wilderness adventure, there are lots of parks and uh, national forests, BLM land, and stuff throughout America, and. Uh, you're, you're able to visit any one of them. Some of them you need permits for. This place you have to put in a permit for at a specific time. You want to do it pretty early. You know, I think we did it six to nine months in advance or something like that. And uh, as it comes closer, they send you information. They send you these informational videos you're required to watch. You have to be a part of this, like, Zoom meeting kind of thing where you have to pay attention and uh, answer some questions at the end, kind of like a little test and uh, you get a specific, a specific time frame to do that in, and then you have to get all your gear ready for however long you're gonna be here, all your food. I mean, it's primitive wilderness area, so uh, your gear is gonna be based off the time of year you go, and the, the weather out here can be, uh, on any wilderness-based lake or body of water, it can be kind of treacherous. Uh, you have a thunderstorm roll in, and you can get white caps, which are the waves starting to break and roll, and and the wind can push you around pretty easy. Uh, so you got to be prepared for weather, thunderstorms, rain, uh, snow, if you're going to be around that time of the year. Um, animals, bugs, which there are a lot of. Um, going to the bathroom and <laughs> the wilderness way, I like to call it. So let's see what else. Um, you got to make uh, reservations for some of the campsites, depending where you're going to be putting in and, and stuff like that. Uh, usually people rent canoes at an Outfitters. We went to the Sawtooth, I believe, Outfitters. And uh, we got a North Star canoe and a, uh, there is five of us, and a um, Winona canoe. They're light Kevlar canoes, and they, uh, they're very, very light, um, which is amazing, because there are portages, which means there are, uh, you, you lake hop, basically, or pond hop on some of the, the smaller bodies of water here, and there are little hiking trails, basically, and you have to carry all your gear, and sometimes if you pack enough or too much, you might have to make two trips, um, but... You throw the canoes over your shoulder, they have these little shoulder pad things with your pack on and you hike to the next body of water. They have designated camping sites here. Um, it's first come first serve on those and they're primitive. They each have a fire grate of some sort. Um, the one here is more of a traditional camping style, but the ones out there are, are kind of hefty actually. And uh, we'll get to see some more of those as the trip progresses still the first day. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, bring enough food, bring extra food. Uh, but you do want to learn to pack light and uh, you don't want to overpack by any means, but you do want to be prepared. And then you have to learn to respect the wilderness while you're out here. Uh, pick up after yourself. You pack in what you pack, you pack out what you pack in, including trash. Um, so that can be a pain. Uh, you gotta be ready for animal encounters, uh, you gotta put your food away, uh, up in a tree. Uh, I'm not sure if they have bear boxes here, um, I have to double check on that one, but, uh, the, the rule of thumb is 10 feet in the air, I believe, and at least 6 feet from a tree, so you have to find a, a branch that suits that category to th throw a rope over, so that's something in the gear you would need to bring, for example, um, Waterproof your pack, uh, clothing, spray down with permethrin, which is a bug repellent for ticks and, and um, mosquitoes. 
variety of tackle if you're going to be fishing. Obviously, you need fishing licenses and, and to be able to get the right one. Uh, we just went and got ours out of Walmart. Uh, the outfitters sometimes sell them and uh, local gas stations and stuff like that sell them too. You can also get them online. Uh, we didn't want to do the online hassle, so we just got them in person. You got to be tough <laughs> and expect to do a little bit of suffering or possibly get injured or possibly have a bad day or whatever because uh, when you're out here in the middle of nowhere in the wilderness there are other people out here uh having a good time too but uh you could be on your own pretty easily and there's no cell service out here either um at least i don't have any uh so that that's a thing if you want to use your phone or anything like that you'll need uh, battery banks, solar chargers, um, you'll need uh, to download or pre-download anything. So I have some audio books, for example. Um, yeah, there's there's lots of stuff to do to prepare, even if for a short trip. Ours is a bit of a longer one. We, uh, we left uh, currently in, in Idaho, and I left and uh, joined my friends in Wyoming. Then we drove up to Montana. And then across North Dakota and into Minnesota. And we drove all the way to Lake Superior, Duluth area, and uh, spent a little bit of time and uh, went to our outfitters. They happened to have our gear a little bit early, which means we were able to get to camp a little bit early. And we are now chilling. We have a uh, most of our group of the four of the five of us out there and i'm uh, kind of guarding camp and also just relaxing yeah so we'll cover more along the trip as we go and uh, if you have any questions you can post them in the comments below if you're interested in doing a trip or want any uh particular uh, information about a trip like this i know i just briefly covered it and just chit chatting here so we found a little chipmunk friend Got some shenanigans from our little friend here. Looks like he's looking for a snack. He's about 15 feet from me right now. Doesn't seem to be afraid. He's a really pretty guy though. That pattern is really cute. All right, maiden voyage, we are halfway through Kwishui Lake. All right, first fish of the trip. First bite from North. <laughs> oh, it got away. <laughs> Slimy sauce. Passing our first rock wall. Every one of these will be looking for the pictographs. Don't see, you guys just see any on this one? Yeah. No. Nope. I see the rocks. So where are we at, Mark? This is... Kwishawee River headed into Kwishachong Lake. Kwishawee River headed on to Kwishachong Lake. I've been passing these really pretty uh, lily pads with I flowers. From about 10 years ago, five or 10 years ago. Right. Found a little friend. He's got pretty nice color. I'll put him right here. And there he goes. All right, after two portages, we are in Lake Polly. One was a little over half a mile. One was slightly shorter, but uh, 
it was rough. How was the portages, guys? What do you gotta say? Not too shabby. <laughs> not too shabby and not, not too fun. So we had a lot of people coming back from this lake. We had like six or seven canoes coming coming back from this lake. So the portage comes off of this rock over here. So we've been fishing this little island, sitting here, um, eating lunch. And I've had some uh, smallmouth bass fall, tug at the end, and I had one bite one of my lures off and I lost another one and had some small perch attacking the tails. But I had one smallmouth right here steal one of my curly tail grubs. Anyway, it's a good looking fish. That'll be dinner. All right, we caught us a little baby perch. Although there's a lot ones, there's ones that are a lot smaller in here than this guy. I got two leeches on me today, one for each bass. This guy's real pretty though. Super vibrant colors. Well, we found ourselves a little walleye hole. This is my first walleye of the trip. Little guy. He's got some pretty cool colors. All right, we caught one just a little bit bigger. Not real big, but uh, I want to try a bite. So got a small mouth for Turner and this guy. The colors on him are pretty cool. Then we got a little pile of them over here. Well, I figure I'd show one of the portage trails here. This one's super pretty. It's got uh, some moss growing. This is a portage in between a lake and a river. I believe super pretty we got birch trees here a lot of them seem to be falling and down including the bigger ones and a lot of conifer not other not a lot of other hardwoods seem to be here so today i've gotten two leeches another tick Two leeches bit. One took probably 10 minutes to stop bleeding after pressure. The other one, probably three minutes. Oh, let's see, what else? Oh, we caught a bunch of walleye. One pike. Uh, two largemouth bass. I had one for breakfast slash lunch. And one will be for dinner. The other walleyes will be for dinner as well. So I didn't know, but they actually have hikes out here too, apparently, which is cool. There's a lot of trails on a lot of the islands made to go to different, to be able to fish it from different sides. There's a river down here that's not easily passable. Looks like we got a squirrel butt or something right there. Some little critter. Probably eaten by an owl, judging by the uh, canopy here, I would imagine. Whew, it's been a long day. We're on Mulberg Lake and one of the portages at one of the far ends, I believe. I'm uh, headed back to where we tied up the canoes on one side and we're fishing this other side where there was a hole of walleyes. Ooh, I'll tell you what, this will get you in shape real quick. That's something you probably want to do if you ever come out here is be in some sort of good shape beforehand. Ooh. Drink lots of water. It's surprisingly more humid out here than I thought it was going to be, which I enjoy humidity, but... We thought it was going to be a lot cooler than it was. And the water's been so warm. Probably feels like it's in the 70s almost. Maybe. 
So we got one canoe here, one canoe here. Let's check on our, our dinner here. See how he's doing. He's still kicking. Small mouth. So I'm gonna fish this till the uh the rest of the party gets here. Lots of flies, black flies. So yeah, it's been a uh, quite the trip so far. Man, there are and there are lots of bugs. Even trying to hold the camera right here, they're trying to land on my hand, my legs. But it's definitely a beautiful place. So this morning, or last night rather, we had a thunderstorm lighting up the sky everywhere. You know, we got the remnants here. Dumped pretty good. It's pretty uh, humid slash muggy. And uh, tons of mosquitoes out. And we had someone, so we have this little beach here. And we have a turtle friend that was coming and laying eggs for a few days, digging these holes. And uh, last night we got some predator came and uh, dug up a lot of the eggs and ate them. So this is the village massacre site of our turtle friend. Had himself a good old feast. Today we're going to look at the petroglyphs or graphs, however it's pronounced. And uh, we'll be moving camp tomorrow from Malberg to another place. Cooling down some water here. Put it in the bottle quicker. What'd you guess? Five pounds. Five? Maybe five and a half. Did you weigh it? We're trying to, to stop moving around. Three and a half. Trying to video at the same time. Mark okay. said three and a half. You go ahead and do it. <laughs> that, this scale may not be accurate. It's really old. Can you get it? Well, without the deflection in there, it would be sitting at five pounds. That's right. Woo! Yeah. Right about there. Just just under five pounds. So this is called River Lake, right? Mm -hmm. Got some swans up here.
cayenne. Surf for fish. All right, so pretty windy day here on Wahlberg Lake. Tried fishing earlier, did some laundry. Um, been fishing and uh, finally I caught myself a pike. The first one of the trip, everyone else has caught in at least a couple. He's uh, just over a pound and he is, uh, uh, what was it, 19 and a half inches, I believe. Beautiful little guy, feisty. Caught him on a uh, bucktail. Let's see what I got here. It's a bucktail uh, cast master here. We'll see how he tastes. Maiden voyage of the firebox stove. on the Boundary Waters canoe area. About to fry up some of this pike. So our turtle friend is back laying eggs. There's two holes in its shell, one in the front, one in the back. Almost looks like it got shot. This must be, I wonder, I don't think that's the same turtle. Do you see the holes in its shell? I'm kind of thinking this is a, a destination beach for laying eggs. Yeah. Pretty cool. Mississippi. Looks muddy. Clear like up a, here. Got a buffalo. Oh, How are we gonna go? Boom. Oh. 